NBC Sports Bay Area. What's up, man? This is Ian Williams, and I'm here with one of your favorite 49ers, Eric Armstead, number 91 on the field, but number one in your hearts. Um, obviously, you know, everything's been going on with the quarantine and the virus, so I hope everyone's doing well um, here at NBC Sports. I know we're hoping that everyone's doing well and everybody's staying safe. Um, but I wanted to, you know, kind of dive and get under the helmet of one of the players, obviously one of the best players uh, that the 49ers had last season. Uh, was Eric Armstead, so kind of the, wanted to go, you know, through, you know, his training regimen, maybe his nutrition regimen, and see, you know, some of the changes that have uh, come about since everything's been going on, and then, you know, kind of see what's uh, what's going on in his personal life. So, yeah, let's dive into it. Eric Armstead, hey, man, appreciate you for uh, for hopping on and talking with us today, obviously, about everything that's going on, but uh, I really wanted to get into the 916 charity. Uh, you've been doing a great job with that, obviously. Uh, so I know last month was a big month for you. You know, I, I had some questions. I know a lot of fans did. They had a good time either watching you, you know, play Madden uh, for the State Farm, you know, Madden tournament that you did, or, you know, the COVID-19 talk that you did with, you know, Mary Steinberg. So, you know, out of those two things, you know, what did you really have fun with? Uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun uh, with everything, you know, going on. I think it's a unique time to uh, do. Um, and give back and do some great things that I, you know, probably wouldn't have time for, you know, if everything was was normal. So, have an opportunity to talk with the mayor and try to uh, you know, give people some resources and things they can um, can use during COVID, um, and try to give some just some hope and, um, you know, let them know that you know we're all going through something similar and, you know, to to have hope and and. Uh, to you know keep the fight going um was was super fun but also playing in the Madden tournament on a different different type of vibe was uh fun as well being able to you know play video games and raise money for a great cause it's something simple but you know it can go a long way so um you know still trying to do more and more uh in the community and continue to uh give back and and um help in any way i can awesome and the fans you know if you guys don't know the 916 charity that's Eric's uh, you know, project that he does, obviously in the Sacramento, but in the kind of California area. Area uh, nine one six stands for uh, the nine one six area code for Sacramento. So you know he's doing a great job, um, not only in Santa Clara or San Francisco. He's doing a good job uh, throughout California. And I also wanted to talk about um, your play, uh, your, your your performance on the field. Also, you know, you kind of added that. Uh, element to your game this year with you know you know you having a sack that's a thousand dollars added to your uh, to your charity and then a per tackle that was two fifty so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, can you talk about you know a little bit of you know the inspiration of where that came from? Yeah, just trying to give people uh, um, you know some to to have fun with and kind of keep track of and raise money in a cool way. And I considered it a win win for. For me and everyone, you know, the better I play, the more money, you know, I donate and we raise together. So um, it was super fun. We raised uh, thirty-one thousand um, dollars to go back into the community. So um, and you know, and and I had a lot of success on the field. So that was, it was, it was just a win-win all around for everybody. You know, the um, fans who got involved. I want to say thank you and appreciate you. And um, but I think you know everybody just had fun with it, and you know it was a win-win for everybody involved. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, the 49er fans had a good time with that. I know you had a good time with it. And uh, I'm sure that the recipients of that uh, that charity fund were also, you know, really uh, excited and happy about the whole situation, too. Um, so I kind of want to get into training. Obviously, uh, with everything going on, you haven't been able to go to, to you know, the, the stadium or the uh, uh, facility and train and do what you normally have been doing, you know, during the off season. So, uh, you know, what are some changes to your your you know, your physical activities of you know, weight training, conditioning, or uh, nutrition wise? You know, obviously you can't go out and get you know your food like you used to. You know, uh, like can you talk about some some changes that you've made so far? Yeah, so you know when all this started, I was down in Florida training with my trainer uh, Mark Hall, and we were able to get some some good work in, and they start closing stuff down. So we were trying to find some spaces, you know, outside to uh, continue to work. Um, and, and then they start closing the parks down. So it's, you know, it's just taking it day by day, constant adjustments. And then 
um, when stuff started to get worse, I came back uh, to be with my fiance um, and we were doing quarantine workouts and um, she eats she eats healthy too and knows how to cook. So uh, we've been eating, you know, we went grocery shopping um, like every every week and, you know, we were just trying to, you know, do what we could to, to uh, you know, stay, stay, stay in shape and, and stay healthy. And so um, we did a good job. It was probably the first time I, I didn't eat out for like two weeks straight, which is probably probably like a record for me. So, um, what's the first yeah. spot you go to when you when you when you when you eat when you can go out and eat? Uh, first spot, man, depends depends where I'm at. Depends where I'm at where everything uh, opens back up. Let's see if I'm in the Bay Area. Um, I probably there's a spot in um, like the Willow Glen area called Dry Creek Grill. Okay. That I like. Um, so yeah, definitely gotta go there. Um, That's it. Don't yeah. don't tell us no more. Cause you have people bother you now. Don't tell us no more. <laughs> These niggas that one. <laughs> I'll probably hit. I'll probably hit there first or something. All right. Cool. Cool. That's what's up. Um, I'm glad you talked about uh, Mark Hall. I know you've been working with him for the past few years. He's worked with a couple other D linemen um, before us and a couple of D linemen around the league. Um, he's done a great job. Obviously. Um, just kind of helping, you know, you guys like kind of study the game and become more of a professional on and off the field. Uh, can you talk about, you know, kind of the role model that he's been for you and, and kind of the techniques that he's helped you, you know, kind of master? Because, bro, you showed up and you showed out this year, you know. I always knew you had the potential, but I think certain people, you know, in your life and then also things that happened previous, you know, with your injuries and stuff like that, that allowed you to kind of come into your own this year. So can you talk about, you know, how he's helped you? Yeah, for sure. You know, he's, he's helped me a lot. We've been uh, working together for a few years now. Um, since after after my rookie year, actually, we've been working together off and on. But this year, you know, we really wanted to hone in and, and uh, get on a more consistent schedule and, uh, you know, just, just work more efficiently at a higher level. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing really is just, you know, um, when you're at the facility, um, you know, there's only just so there's only so much time that you can focus on getting better um, individually. There's only so much that your coaches can do. You know, they're responsible for a bunch of other players. You know, um, everything is group oriented. You got to focus on the playbook and 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 uh, you know, making sure the group has chemistry and all these things. And so for me, the biggest thing was just individually working on myself away from the facility. And that's what, um, and, um, and taking an extension of what I learned, you know, together and what my coaches want for me um, and what they're, what they're trying to teach me and going away from the facility and continue to, the, to apply that, work on it daily, work on it more consistently, continue to work on my body, keeping um, in tip top shape all year round, not allowing my body to break down throughout the year. So that's lifting, stretching um, on off days and uh, work, continue to work on, on my skill set too, which I don't always have time to do uh, at the facility. So uh, I think that's just the biggest thing that was key for me is, uh, you know, having, having Mark there to, um, to facilitate, um, you know, work on, continue to work on my body uh, throughout the whole season, work on my, my technique and my skill uh, away from the facility and uh, also, too, away from the facility, um, breaking down and coming up with game plans, how I'm going to go out there and, um, you know, try to abuse these offensive linemen. So um, that, that's just what our, that's what, what our plan that we came up with and we stuck with it. And, you know, it definitely worked. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to continue to do is get better and better. I saw that throughout the whole season. Uh, if anybody follows you, uh, this Eric Armstead's uh, social media handle for for Instagram is SackNina91. So if you ever, you know, he posts a lot of, uh, you know, his workout videos. Uh, you know, he lives out here in San Jose in the area. So, you know, he would post certain things where he was working out. He would literally go to practice and, you know, he would go home and then he would be outside, like in the pool deck area, you know, doing handwork drills. And these are the type of things, you know, I saw and I'm sure a lot of people saw um, throughout the year and throughout the years that, you know, kind of, you know, you just got better with everything just, just through repetition. And uh, I know the 49 fans are excited for having you around for um, another half a decade. And I know you're excited uh, 
for, for being around for another half half a decade. Um, so you know, flipping the page, you know, any new hobbies or like, like new activities like you started to do, you know, you know since you kind of had more time on your hands. You know, I know you have your charity and your training going on, but now you just have like more free time on your hands. So I have you like you know, new like walks or like you know jogs or you know started biking or you know flying a kite. I don't know, just random things. <laughs> Uh, I was not, not any act, not any active things. I wouldn't say, uh, I mean, I went for a couple, went for a couple hikes, which was fun, you know, just get out the house and, you know, get in some space, get some fresh air. But, um, you know, I've been watching uh, some great shows, uh, for sure. Um, but I actually have been like super busy. It's kind of like crazy, like with everyone, you know, with technology, like you do a lot of stuff from home. So it's, it's been, it's been actually pretty super busy. So my days have been kind of packed. That's good. Good. Glad you're staying busy. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, staying occupied, training and everything else. Glad everything's going good. Uh, you know, kind of flipping the page again, you know, kind of like more, you know, closing thoughts. Um, you know, you, everything going on with the NFL right now with, you know, they're trying to obviously get the season um, back in play for September and stuff like that. But, you know, obviously the, the fact of not having fans um, at the stadium could be, you know, one of the um, the things that they allow for the players to be able to come back and play. So you know, how is that going to, you know, affect you? Do, are you going to be, you know, ready to be able to, you know, get out there and get your blood hot, you know, and get ready, you know, with no fans? I don't know, bro, because – you know, it feels like practice to me, but, you know, you're going to be able to, you know, turn in practice and, and be able to make it a game type situation scenario. I mean, you're going to have to. I mean, that's, that's um, you know, really, really for me is, you know, people's health is number one. You know, our, our health and, and um, the fans' health and, you know, everybody uh, involved. So that's number one, and that's what they decide to do, that that's, um, you know, what – what is needed to keep everybody safe and healthy. I mean, we're gonna have to adjust, we're gonna have to make it happen. It's definitely gonna be weird, but you know, um, we'll be able to perform for the fans and they'll be able to watch at least. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 it, would, it would definitely be crazy. I, I, don't, I don't know how it would be or how uh, we're all gonna adjust, but you know, we're gonna continue to take it day by day. And if that's that's where things get, then you know, we're gonna have to have to strap it up and. Uh, get out there and, and uh, you know, play hard and, and give the fans something to, to cheer about virtually. A.K.A. Eric Armstrong going to be ready, y'all. That's what he just said. All right. <laughs> the last question, obviously, uh, before, you know, we, we close out, I don't want to hold you up too much. I know you've been watching The Last Dance. I know you're a basketball player. Someone who averaged a double-double in high school, you know, no big deal, uh, you know. <laughs> so you have a basketball mind, you know, does watching the last dance cement Jordan as the GOAT in your opinion, or do you have another player who's the GOAT? Uh I mean I don't think the I don't think the documentary cements him. I think, you know, he's definitely cemented as the GOAT. Um in terms of uh you know, I think people have different definitions. Um he's definitely the GOAT uh of that of his era, definitely the um, I would, you know, and based off championships and, and winning pedigree, um, he's, he's, the, he's the goal overall, too. So, I mean, how you change the game culturally, uh, being an icon, uh, winning, you know, his play style. Um, you know, he, he put on a show for people who, come, who uh, went to watch him. Um, so, yeah, he's def definitely, I would consider him, him the GOAT. Um, and then, you know, you got, got, uh, LeBron and, and Kobe and some of the other names right there, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see how, unless, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, um, you know, nationwide people have a bunch of conversations, but it's going to be tough, uh, if you don't got six rings to, <laughs> to the rings, the ring things. Even though the rings are, are a team, you know, team team uh, accomplishment, I mean, it just depends what, what you consider, you know, a GOAT in, in your eyes. Is it just winning? Is it just, you know, uh, it's real opinionated. But I think 
I think Jordan definitely has the best argument. All right. I like it. Fans, I hope y'all like that. Got into the the mind and what Eric Arms has been up to uh, during the offseason and, you know, his uh, dreams and aspirations for his charity, 916, 916 charity. And obviously, you know, him having to get ready for, obviously, maybe no fans for the games. And then, you know, his opinions about who's the, who's the greatest of all time on the basketball court. Eric Arms said, hey, man, we appreciate you. Uh, make sure everybody you check more out on NBC Sports Bay Area or my team's app. Eric, I'll talk to you later, bro. Ian Appreciate, Williams, you, bro. We got- <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for having me on. All right, bro. Anytime. Appreciate you.